Hello and welcome to a pro patch breakdown here at LOL Class. Let's take a look at this week's changes. So Skarn is a champion that has been overperforming ever since he has been like changed. So Riot just wants to um, kind of alter his playstyle a bit more, where he loses zone control in his spires, which were in addition to, the, to his uh, kit change. He felt really strong as soon, as soon as he ran into his area and was able to control space and was able to get ahead and was basically unbeatable. Tri Riot is trying to connect it to a certain extent, so it feels more like re still rewarding to get them, but it feels less rewarding in the early game, makes it more, more uh, feasible to fight him in his own jungle especially. They're literally just making his W because this mana and his journey having a lower cooldown, which doesn't really help you with laning. This is just like the the 10 less mana early doesn't really provide you anything. Whereas if it healed you like maybe 20 more health, then that would maybe make this champion way stronger in laning phase. And because he's not really strong in laning phase and that's all the champions literally um, doing more laning phase plus having better engaged plus being better out of lane like in team fights, then Bardis as a champion is just not that strong right now. And like Bardis always getting, well, lately he's been buffed a lot, but the buffs they're making are not efficient enough to make Bard as a champion viable. You can still play him if you're a really good Bard and you can still obviously win games, but if you just play for win and you don't really care what champions you're playing, then I would not say Bard is one of those champions. I would more go towards Alistair, Anami, Janna, because they are all always gonna do really well in lane and really, like, they're gonna do a lot in team fights. The changes to AP ratios on Fizz Q and W is just to make up for the lack of amplified damage on the physical damage on Fizz ult. Because even if you're building AP, you're still going to be doing auto attack damage and that physical damage still got amplified. But with the site AP ratio changes, it pretty much evens out. So AP Fizz will be about the same, but it makes like the Bruiser AD Fizz a lot worse. W change on the Drunken Rage. Um, Dryas loses a lot of damage potential. What he what has been able to do ever since a change to his Q, where it, I think it reduced the amount of movement speed slow it has initially before it ranks up. He, he was able to max W and basically fight everyone in the jungle, even like damage junglers such as Lee Sin or maybe even Evelyn. And with this change, I think Grag is definitely going to be weaker. I think you will have to actually decide between maxing W or Q again, whereas before it was pretty by default W and you would always max it, even in uh, matchups where you probably are against ranged uh, junglers such as Nidalee, because the W just like did so much damage to both camps, enemy champions, and still gave you the tank ability through the damage reduction. So Grag is definitely going to be more vulnerable right now. The Galissa changes are pretty decent, but are probably not going to put her completely out of competitive play. Uh, the W cooldown and, and damage of the passive is pretty big for trading in the early game. We've seen Kalista with range supports a lot lately because the range supports just allow her to proc that W passive constantly in lane every time it's available and it helps her win trades. But with that getting nerfed a little bit, we might see her more with some bruiser type champions. But luckily there's also a, a nerf to her ulti, which I feel is long overdue. But the salt has been really low cooldown, and I think it's about time it's put to two minutes. The change on Lux Mining, where it does 100% of the damage and root timing on the secondary target, is really useful for trades and all ins. Right now, if you hit it through the target, the root timing isn't long enough to get your ulti off. The change to the mana on Q is nice, but it's not going to be a huge deal because it's only on later levels where you're already going to have big mana items like Athenes. So, Maka in this patch, his ultimate is getting nerfed a lot. Normally it would be a 40 seconds cooldown, now it's 60 seconds at rank 1, and then 30 seconds at rank 2, but now 50, and then 20 seconds at rank 3, but now 40. And it's a huge nerf to Maokai, because first of all, Maokai as a champion is getting worse and worse in this meta, because top laners like Fiora, Garen, Darius, they are all being played more and more, and those are really good into Maokai, because Maokai will never get pressure in lane against those because they all have heals or they have they just literally gonna out trade you every single time and now with Malka's ultimate also being nerfed that means you can't wave clears efficiently and you can't really trade them and on top of that like if you're playing Maokai against those kind of tanks either you have to be really good at using your TP and making pressure on all lanes or you have to make ganks. Like you have to make sure that you make gang setups with your jungler because Darius, Garen, and Fjord will all outskill you really, really hard. And in team fights, Maka is not going to do anything compared to those. So, 
So Nocturne's weakness has, has been that he's just unable to capitalize on his ultimate, so he had to be really close. So his ultimate didn't really feel like an ultimate, and rather just like a normal gap closer, because most champions that are pretty efficient in jungle right now already have terrain gap closers, and they're not short by any means. So this Nocturne change actually helps him to set up ganks way better, especially in the older game, to make, to make sure that his first ultimate is worth the effort. Because if it wasn't for his ultimate, Nocturne would be nothing and he'd just actually be a weaker Rengar. Right now, you probably have the discussion between Nocturne and Rengar as the level 6 uh, gang masters. And it's interesting to see this happening right now. Tom Kench is really a uh, really good champion against uh, melee matchups, but he has always been lacking against ranged champions, so he could be tired forever and just simply be kept on, on a lot of space and. Uh, with this change, with the like with Spassif as well as the Devour change, he has more room to work with, more actions, uh, more time of action basically. Because first off, his his acquired taste lasts longer, and therefore you're able to get uh, like get more pressure onto squishies as soon as you hit them once with your Q or with an auto attack, because they will always have to be scared to be either eaten or CC'd by the Q or the W respectively. The increase on range of the Devour just gives him uh, again more room to work with and this allows them to kind of put up more pressure in teamfights especially whereas beforehand squishies could just stay stay on like 250 range, 200 range and not really 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 be in danger because Tom Kench as soon as some, someone was between Tom Kench and uh, his his uh, target there was nothing he can do now he just has more uh, action range in general. Rek'Sai has an incredibly strong kit and one part of her kit that was usually like uh, not seen or undervalued was that every time she borrows the next attack out of the unborrow would basically give you 15 uh, bonus fury and 15 bonus fury means that you're gonna heal up as soon as you get below the surface once more and it just means that every time Rek'Sai, Rek'Sai was actually rewarded for burying more often than not and not staying on a target in her unborrowed form so that just kind of like makes counterplay happen uh, more frequently because she won't just suddenly get 15 fury therefore maybe do more damage on her EE or vice versa heal more the next burrow just weakens her a bit in, in prolonged team fights If you're not able to reach the backline because maybe they have a really fed AD carry or the AP carry and AD carry